Okay, folks, thanks very much for joining. Um, I'm Rich Dale, I'm CEO of Flowlands. Um, and just uh, welcome everyone to the, uh, to the webinar. So just um, before we jump into the questions and introductions, just by way of background for anyone who's, who's new, new to Flowlands, um, basically Flowlands is a, a cloud-based MRP software system and CRM and service management tool. So we basically combine all of the um, key parts of the business process that a small equipment machinery or device manufacturer needs to, to um, manage everything in one place. We also plug into Xero and QuickBooks, uh, online uh, cloud accounting applications, as well as Sage 50. So it makes for an overall ecosystem that allows a small but growing and ambitious uh, business, um, as you'll see with, with our panelists today, to, to create a platform for growth. So could I ask everyone to introduce yourselves? I'll start with, uh, with Gareth. Hi, I'm uh, Gareth Black, the Technical Director of Flint FC. Uh, we're a niche supplier of high pressure hose emergency quick disconnect systems, to the offshore oil and gas industry. Our systems are used in hoses to connect vessels to fixed points either on the surface or deep under the ocean. Uh, in the event of an emergency, our systems act like a fuse and snap, preventing damage to the environment, people and infrastructure. We're a small business of five people based in Ellesmere Port in the UK. Our equipment is supplied to clients across the globe from Australia to the Caspian Sea. Thank you, Gareth. Nathan, could you? Uh, hi, I'm uh, Nathan Peel. I'm the co-owner of uh, Danatech uh, Limited. We're a uh, bespoke engineering, design and manufacturing company that um, supply uh, equipment used in critical and cha challenging applications that involve high pressure, high temperature, dangerous chemicals, or moving heavy loads. Uh, we were established in 2020 at the start of the first lockdown. Um, we've got a customer base that's now nearly 20 strong, um, involving blue chip customers such as Siemens Energy, uh, One Sub C, uh, and uh, NSG. Um, we've recently won a number of large contracts uh, with Jacobs Clean Energy, uh, and we are eight strong at the moment and growing. Um, we do everything from design right through to manufacture and installation and commissioning. Thank you, Nathan. And Ray? Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Ray Dodd. I'm the general manager on systems. I've been with the company since January this year. Uh, we, uh, we design and develop power modules for a variety of different platforms um, in a variety of different industries. Um, been a tough year with the pandemic, obviously, but what we're now seeing is a lot of contracts coming through that have been sat on people's desk waiting for some senior signatures. So we're about 10 strong as of yesterday. And we have some serious growth plans in the next five years. Thank you, Ray. And Marv, last but not least. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, Marv Van Niekirk, uh, Head of Operations and Customer Success at Flowlands. Um, and again, always curious to, to learn about the, the, the different ways um, that people use Flowlands within their business and how it benefits them. Thank you, Marv. So going to uh, kick off with Ray. Um, so Ray, you're a, a gamekeeper turned poacher. Um, yeah. <laughs> so with uh, your uh, um, other hat, you're also uh, an ISO and other standards. You're, you're an, an auditor. Um, yeah. So you see both sides of the coin. So um, through your experience, uh, just in setting the scene, I'm interested, you know, where, where you see a quality accreditation being a, you know an actual practical uh, game changer for a, for a business and not just a, another thing another tick box exercise. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I so I've been in quality management, business improvement and transformation for the last thirty years now. Um, I was with Talis for fifteen years, Atomic Weapons on Trident as head of operating excellence, and CMMI. If anybody's familiar with that corporate assessor. Um, and also a couple of years in the automotive industry with IATF 16949 standard. And through my experience with being on the receiving end of audits, and not just accreditations, but customer audits as well, um, 
a lot of companies that I've worked and operated within to, to get audit ready for the audit and they're collecting evidence and everything and trying to make sure that everything's okay. We had our ISO three year research about three weeks ago. It lasted six hours and it was all demonstrated through flow length. Now the benefit, the obvious benefit is we're obviously always audit ready. That ISO 9001 certificate on the wall is one thing, but having ensuring it's effective is, is another thing, you know, completely. And um, a lot of our customers would not even deal with us if we were 9001. And looking further down, down the line, now that we have a very well established QA that is certified 9001, uh, everyone will, I'm sure, agree that in, the environment is a very hot topic. And a lot of our customers are asking us, when are we going to transition to ISO 14001, which EMS, so similar to QMS. Sorry if I'm teaching anyone to suck eggs. So we're going to build it in, in, in the same way, but from a, an environmental perspective, and then hopefully achieve where we're already talking with BSI, uh, 14,001 by the end of the next year. And I just see that as a, as a growing theme and, and requirement that is being cascaded down to us from some of our tier one supply uh, customers. Thank you. Ryan, can Nathan bring you in there in terms of, of the, the struggles in, in, in your prior experience? Um, and when you set up Denatech, you know where, where you saw the, the the ISO process become a huge uh, burden to the business and the systems that weren't weren't really supporting it. Uh, well, yeah, in, in the past, uh, I've been responsible for implementing um, quality management systems in, in different companies, uh, and more often than not, you know, the, the businesses that I've been involved in don't really have the the infrastructure or the size to be able to um, throw people at it from a quality perspective. Obviously, it's very expensive to, to bring in uh, qualified quality managers and people like that to implement quality management systems. Uh, and more often than not, you know, because you know you know the the business that you're working in, um, it's I found the difficulty being that creating a QMS that is um, so tailored to the activities of the business um, and actually providing value rather than it just being a quality management system there that's just there to satisfy ISO 9001. Um, now, obviously, when we set up Denitech, um, it was critical for us that we achieved, um, we, we achieved ISO 9001 very early on as a lot of our customers wouldn't place orders with us. So for us, we had to implement a quality management system uh, and prove the quality management system within the three month window uh, in order to be able to gain our first orders with some of our customers. So it was imperative for us to, to design and implement a quality management system that was uh, easy enough and simple enough to run through in a very short period of time. Uh, and with Flowlands, we were, we were able to do that. Yeah, if I, may, if I may add to that, uh, Rich, I completely understand where you're coming from there, Nathan, and that's kind of how we've shaped our flow lens. So that, our, I mean, let's face it, if, every, if anybody's honest with themselves, how often do they go and read the, Q, the documents from end to end in the QMS? So the way we've structured flow lens is the objective evidence you need for your accreditation actually just pops out by doing the day job. Yeah, and I think the main thing is as well for us, I mean, you know, you can write procedures and processes and SOPs um, that you think uh, are tailored to suit your business. But I think with the simplicity of flow lens and the actual, I mean, the, the clues in the title, you know, it's a flow. And I think the way that uh, flow lens handles um, everything from start to finish, it, it drives the processes and it does it in such a simple fashion. Um, I feel that it, it takes away the, the the complexity of writing procedures because it itself is is you know flows so simply yeah it's almost the procedure yeah good gareth can i bring you in and just understand from your perspective where, how it has impacted uh, a lot um fundamentally the oil and gas business expects suppliers to have ISO 9001 and for several years or since 2015 uh, we were able to demonstrate to our clients that we did have an adequate quality system 
that it wasn't a nice on 1001 system. Um, and partly that was because we had such a low throughput, we were able to control everything with spreadsheets and accounting packages and emails. Um, but we launched a new product about two years ago and the interest from new multinational clients grew significantly. Um, and these new potential customers have a prerequisite that we have a compliant ISO 9001 system in place. So without the system of compliance, they're not able to deal with us. So partly um, actually them being able to deal with us has given us a competitive edge. Uh, but more than this, uh, us really taking 9001 seriously has given us much more control over our business and having the system in place and used, we've reduced our waste and made our deliveries more repeatable so the clients know exactly what they're going to get from us every time. Uh, implementation of Flowlens as part of our sort of ISO 9001 process has really made the difference to us. Um, and recently we delivered a product from order to delivery in seven and a half weeks. And a year ago, it took us 12 weeks. And I guess that's the competitive edge that Flowlens and ISO 9001 has given us. Excellent. That's a significant um, improvement. Okay. Following up on that, in terms of, of, of within the organization, was everyone behind that change or did they have to see the light once they, they got the, uh, you know, started to see those results? Is that directed to me? Yeah. Um, we're only a small business. Um, we've only got five people in our direct team. Um, so I guess if you look down the supply chain, uh, and the support businesses, we probably number dozens. Um, so it's really easy for us to implement a new system at the moment. Obviously, unless we grew, then we've got a problem. But the Flowland system is so easy and um, it follows a logical process that there, there was no resistance to implementing it within our business. Thank you. Um, Can I jump in quick, Rich? Yeah. Ask the guys a question. Um, I, I suppose it's, it's for all three of you. For for anybody who's thinking about going down ISO accreditation um, as, a, as a new process in their business, there's always the scary part of, or the chicken and egg piece of, at what point do I go and do it? There's obviously a benefit to the business from a customer perspective. And I suppose, do you have any advice on when do you do it? Do you wait? to get the customers and wait for the customers to push it? Or do you preempt those uh, customer requirements and say, right, I know I've got to do it. My revenue will be, have a multiplier of X because I do have it. Um, I think, I think from my point of view, I think, it, you know, you've got to be proactive. I think you've got to, you know, to give yourself the edge, you've got to go out there uh, and obtain it and put the systems in place. Um, I think if you do it in, in, in retrospect of, you know, just getting customers and receiving customers, I think you'll be one step behind all the time. Uh, you'll be chasing your own tail. Uh, and, and that's why I think, you know, to, to implement it straight away and to drive the way the direction of your business, I think that's the most important thing to do. And I, I'd suggest doing it as, as early in the process as possible. Let's say we even before we'd even set up, the, the, the QMS was, was generally written. Uh, and then, you know, only then when we started trading, like I say, within three months, you know, the, it was in place, running, and able to be qualified and, and signed off by, um, by a notified body. So I think it's very important. I think, I think from, our, from our perspective, it, it's, it, gives, it gives our cust current customer base confidence uh, new customers, certain level of confidence to the level of the maturity in the, in how we operate our business. Importantly, I would recommend doing it earlier because if you actually move away from we need ISO just because the customer wants it and we want the certificate on board, actually implement it in the true spirit of what the model says, um, you can only benefit. And, and I think that's come across quite nicely through the other guys and some of the savings they've been seeing coupled with using flow loans. Can I just add that I think you'd be a fool not to start doing it as, as soon as possible. It's yeah. uh, it, it forget the idea of this um, sort of overarching sort of uh, sort of Damocles of ISO 9001 hanging over you. It's a useful tool. It's uh, that it's written for a reason and created for a reason. 
And uh, I often think that it, it needs to be called I don't know, quality business systems, not quality matter. It's sort of, no, it's useful to you. Quality manager's ideal is to make himself redundant. So up the quality management system, he gets it in place, and guess what, it just happens. I've always carried that mantra, but I've never, well, <laughs> never been made redundant from, as a quality manager. <laughs> <laughs> Picking up on that point, uh, Ray, what, you know, from a practical perspective, you know, what, what, does, um, what does an audit look like, you know, before you have a system like Flowlands and what does it now, look like now in terms of utilizing it to meet the audit requirements? Yeah, so uh, in previous companies before using Flowlens, it would typically be uh, a week's worth of running around before the audit, gathering all the objective evidence to try and make it as easy as, easy as possible for the auditor. The less you frustrate them, the easier ride you're going to get of it. Um, uh, a lot of plasters would be stuck on, you know, on, on missing gaps within your objective evidence that you need to present to show that you're fulfilling the requirements of the standard. Um, but with, with Flowlens, the way I approached it in our research is I took three different examples of three different products and I took the auditor literally by sh sharing my screen on Flowlens from the inquiry right the way through to delivery to the customer. And the reason why I use three examples is the third example, I could demonstrate corrective action where we had an issue at the customer. That way I, I satisfied every single requirement of the model just by going through each screen in that, as, as, as Nathan says, you know, you, and Gareth say, it's, it's flow, it's in the title. Just follow that flow from idea through to execution. You don't, you don't need a folder's worth of, you don't need a folder's worth of evidence that you've been working on for a week, just do it live. <laughs> and it was very well received, I might add, by BSI. Excellent, give them my number. <laughs> <laughs> They've already got it. <laughs> and you know how important is it you know to, to have a process mapped out to be able to absolutely to, yeah to know is it sort of self-evident <laughs> um so, so we have a tier one uh, or top level process map which shows the architecture of our quality management system so i would start with that effectively and you'll it, i think many would be surprised how how that overlays against the way the flow <laughs> Flow, the work flows through flow lens they're very aligned so so if I, if, I, if I was preparing again for, we've had two big tier one customer audits in the last three months as well and they've all gone extremely well using that same approach to the audit but starting with the the top level process map just familiarize yourself with that flow and then during the audit just go through that flow using a couple of examples to demonstrate the full life cycle of the management system Absolutely. I mean, we, we recommend the first thing you do, even when before you think about a system like ours, is to map the process, you know, understand what your business actually yeah. does. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. My recommendation would be to map it backwards if you haven't done it yet. Walk backwards. You'll see things that you've never seen before. <laughs> walk backwards. I mean, walk the value stream backwards. <laughs> I had visions there. Yeah, you're, you're a talented man, but, you know, <laughs> Tri tripping hazards. Um, I should just say, folks, it's gone 20 past 11. So if you have any questions, uh, thanks to Stephen, who asked us a question there. Hopefully that answered your question there, Stephen, but we can pick that up afterwards. But if you have any other questions, please pop them into the Q&A. Um, I just wanted to pick up with you, Nathan, because um, we discussed this before where you, you had, a, you know, in the past you've seen this and it, it, you had a choices where you could roll your own system you know with different, with different uh, ways you could you could tackle the, the the need particularly you know with your three month kind of deadline um you know could you sp speak to that in terms of the the, the decision making between between off the shelf versus a, like a, a separate qms versus a, a wholly bespoke system uh it was i mean we we, ha we, we had to get it right um we, we you know it was very important for us that we didn't make the wrong decision. Uh, obviously, you know, different systems can cost, you know, you can, you can pay under 200,000 pounds for an MRP, RP system. Uh, you can spend thousands and thousands on getting somebody to write you, you know, a quality management system that, that ends up not being aligned with your business. Um, and, you know, for us, 
Um, you know, we, we had to be very careful about how much money we spent and how long it took. Uh, and for us, you know, we carried out a relatively short qualification sort of uh, process uh, between a number of systems versus, you know, putting together a system that is hodgepodge together with spreadsheets and folders and files and things like that, you know, very sort of manually put together. Um, obviously, something like that in the in the setting up is a lot cheaper, uh, but further down the line it would probably cause us problems in, in terms of the amount of documentation and, and and processes that we would have to carry out. So, yeah, the decision to go with flow lens was made pretty quickly, just from you know uh, almost working it through with some worked examples of the type of work that we do. Uh, and it was pretty clear to see that it would satisfy every single um, part of our business. Gareth, I maybe touched on this earlier on, but in terms of the get, getting the the team bought into to this, uh, you know, how, how did you find that, and uh, you know, how did you get the the, the buy in from other users of, of the product? It, it was easy uh, because uh, we come from a position where we have no, we had we had the spreadsheets and we had we had a procedure here, a spreadsheet here, a database there. Um, it, it, that that system didn't work. Um, we were sporadically creating records, as uh, as Ray said. We were sticking the plaster on it when it came around to audit time. Um, there were gaps in it. The customer would do an audit. We were missing records. Um, so to implement FlowLens was was easy because uh, everybody can see that it it's going to make life easier, and uh, and I think uh, the real um, the real taste of success is when a, a sales guy is using it properly because they you know, historically they hate the process. Yeah, yeah, and I got I've got to say we, we've cracked that nut actually, Gareth. Our sales guy uses it, not he is an absolute flag flyer for it. But I had to bring him round to that way of thinking. If I go back six months, he wasn't in that space. But then they hadn't really tried to fully embrace flow lens at that point. So with a bit of change management it's and benefit from selling, we managed to get him on board and he uses it. He's really, he's, he swears by it now. Yeah, well, I think from, from our point of view as well, it's it sort of it's turned everybody into a salesperson. Uh, you know, the ability to, to pick up an inquiry and to run it through uh, everything from the, the large projects right through to, to spares and servicing, the way it manages that, it, it makes, you know, anybody can pick up an inquiry and turn it into a sales order. You're quite that's, right. That's, I raised a sales but... lead yesterday. <laughs> You're quite right, Gareth. <laughs> Nathan, sorry. Um, I have a question from uh, Oliver Kant, um, who's another FluLens customer. Who, he's asked, has anyone incorporated the FluLens procedures into existing QMS procedures? Oliver has an adjacent online QMS with a wide range of documented procedures and processes, and they're now rewriting several of these to allow for the new FluLens procedures, um, mainly by screen grabs to make the examples easy. Um, has, has has anyone done that? Can I? Um, we we kept our sort of procedures very top level and uh, flowcharts um, to map around what we'd already done. Uh, so we didn't. We don't actually have screen grabs of um, flow lens or how to operate the system in our procedures um, because it is sort of it's very intuitive. So we we just have top level procedures. So we didn't have to necessarily implement a flow lens screen grab into our actual documentation. We try to keep it light. Yeah. Yeah, no, we're, we're the same. We, um, we've kept the, the QMS general enough so that, like I say, it allows flow lens to, 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 to lead the process rather than a sort of necessarily tying ourselves down in the documentation sense. Yeah, and, we, and we've done exactly the same, guys. So we just point to flow lens within our top level Q QMS. And we believe we're in small QMS, big training, and obviously built in processes that put you, that direct you naturally down that road that you want your, your workforce to take. 
Super. Thank you, guys. Um, just before we have a couple of minutes to wrap up, I just wanted to ask the, the audience, thanks again, for everyone, for, for attending. I'm curious to know, you know, we, we'd like to um, keep doing webinars on different topics associated with, you know, business improvement and, and effectiveness. So if you have any burning topics that you would like uh, us to cover in a webinar format, uh, please drop them in the in the Q&A or, or email us afterwards. Um, so I just wanted to wrap up. Uh, firstly, guys, are, are there any questions you'd like to ask of each other? Um, if not, I was going to sort of, um, I'm obsessed with this sort of change management and, you know, get, we've touched on it a couple of times where you've got some quick wins and a lack of resistance, but actually get, getting the, 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 the business leaders to change um, can sometimes be a huge mental block. Uh, so interested in any perspectives on that you've just got to be you've got to just be tenacious don't give up just keep showing the benefits all the time if i go back six months the levels of frustration for the workforce trying to locate information that was stored in this folder or this folder or duplicated over here duplicated over there and you just keep saying but coach people as well you sit on their shoulders show them how to do it and it, it will stick it will stick but you've you've got to be prepared to, if you, if, I say it's fairly easy. I think as as Gareth and Nathan said, you know, in a small organisation, it's you know this is what we're doing. <laughs> Let's get on with it. In a bigger organisation, you're probably looking at a bit more of a change program itself. Um, and a, as part of that, you'd still go through the same process, but you'd scale it up. Mm -hmm. um, Kenny has asked, does FluLens help with continuous improvement? Absolutely. We've got, so under projects, we've set up a business improvement project where we've assigned tasks that are all against our three pillars of our improvement program for the year. And we meet monthly on that. We get measures from that and it helps drive uh, continuous improvement, making sure that it doesn't drop off the radar. But it, is, it is continuous improvement. Effective. And it's nice having it all in Flowlens again. Our health and safety project in Flowlens our quality management, audit schedule, program, cars, or non-conformance reports, all in flow lens against quality assurance project. So everything's in there. It's not sat on a yellow in a yellow folder anymore. It's all in there and you can assign, as I said, tasks. And the forms template is extremely useful. So our cards, for example, were a 1902 Word document, you know, that could do with refreshing. So what we've done is created a template in, in under template forms. Um, and now we've gone template crazy. So we've got a template delivery advice note, uh, a template sales and order checklist review that we go through every Tuesday on new orders. You know, we're just form after form after form. And, and the thing about it is, is you're, you're attaching it to the, to the job or the asset or the part. You know where you're going for it every single time. It's, yeah. Why wouldn't someone want to use it? There you go. I'll put the question back to you, Rich. <laughs> Agreed. And Nathan, and Nathan, please don't say that other ERP tools are a lot more expensive, not with Rich on the line. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get, you get a lot of value out of Flulens, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> but um, Gareth, Nathan, have you anything to add to that point, just as we wrap up? No, I think, I mean, it was, it was uh, good to hear uh, from Ray about how, you know, certain aspects of Flulens that we haven't actually started using yet. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so... Well, I'm learning something there, something that we can do again for to continuously improve our processes is to to both implement some of the things that you were talking about then there as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you need if you want any any help, just drop us a line in anyone, any of you. I think I would just add that um, as a small business owner, it could be quite stressful and lonely at times. And having the um, having a ISO 9001 system implemented and Flowlens system implemented, it does, uh, it does give you comfort that we're doing everything we can to make sure that uh, we're minimizing the chance of things going wrong. And with the systems in place, uh, we know that if it does go wrong, we've got a robust way of dealing with it. And it, it reduces anxiety and stress levels significantly. Absolutely. Good stuff, it's glad to hear we're making life um, easier and helping people get, <laughs> get some sleep at night. Um, just let me check. Um, 
Okay, so St Steve has asked a question, um, which I'll pick up with uh, after the after the call. Um, so we're just w one minute over time. So I really appreciate uh, everyone's uh, time and input. Um, Gareth, uh, Ray, Nathan, Marvin, thank you to all of our all of our attendees and our questioners. It's been great. Um, as I said, please email me richardflowlens.com if you have any any other questions or suggestions and um, we're, we're here to listen and here to, to take action. So the recording will be emailed out uh, shortly as well. Um, so thanks again and um, just get in touch if you need anything. Lovely, thanks. Have a good day everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks guys. Thank you. Bye. Thanks Bye. guys. Take care.